Okay, I thought we would do a fun little interlude here and compare and compare general relativity GR with quantum mechanics QM. And when I, the comparison is just on how they use vector spaces for this whole mess of their architecture. So both of them are theories of reality, right? They're different theories of different parts of reality, but they both use the same tools to structure the reality and uh, to make models of the physical world. So in general relativity, it's going to, this part's going to seem real familiar to you. We have the vector space V. In general relativity, the vector space V we always, well, we typically write uh, in terms of what is the basis. And we're going to talk just about the coordinate basis. So say partial i, those represent the coordinate vectors in general relativity. And because we're dealing with four-dimensional space-time, this is usually a four-dimensional vector space. So V is a four-dimensional vector space. The basis vectors are given by these differential operators that are attached to the coordinate system in space-time. But each, but right now we'll just talk about the vector space at one point in space-time uh, and it's, uh, this is the basis for it. Now in quantum mechanics we're talking about the vector V is usually called the Hilbert space. I'll try to draw a fancy H. In the Hilbert space, um, well, the vector space in quantum mechanics, let's not call it the Hilbert space. It is still just a vector space, which is a set of objects, and those objects they call kets. But each ket is a vector. And the basis for the vector, the basis for the quantum mechanical space, is labeled by some variable, and that variable is usually jammed inside the ket, and in this case the variable is A. Now here we said it was a finite dimensional vector space, four dimensions, so there's i goes to 0, 1, 2, and 3. Quantum mechanics, that's not true. You can have finite vector spaces that you're working with. For example, in quantum computing, you have the vector space of the state 0 and the state 1. Uh, when you're dealing with uh, EPR experiments, you have vector spaces of the state minus 1 half plus one half, right, when you're talking about the spin states. So those are very, very finite. They have less dimensions than this one. However, if you're talking about the infinite square well or the square well, you'll have uh, n, where n is a countable 0, 1, 2, forever, all the way up to infinity. So there's an infinite basis, but it's countable. But if you're dealing with problems that model um, uh, electron energies above certain binding energies, say above the binding energy of the hydrogen atom, or outside the square well. Now you might have the momentum of that energy, which is actually just an uncountable number. Every continuous value of the momentum is a basis vector in the quantum mechanical vector space. So you have a lot more options for the dimensionality of the vector space in quantum mechanics. But each member of this state here is some vector modeling some element of space-time. It could be a vector modeling um, uh, momentum, it could be a vector modeling, or it could be a, a, a vector modeling, say, uh, uh, magnetic field or electric field, although those are not tensorial per se. Um, in quantum mechanics, uh, each vector represents a state of a physical system. And it's a very abstract concept. It's much harder to wrap your head around, but it represents a physical state of the system. And presumably, whatever this vector is uh, contains all the information about those states. Um, so a, a routine element of a vector space in general relativity, say the vector y, you would write the vector y as y alpha del alpha, right? There's an arbitrary vector y. It's got components, which in ve are vector fields usually, so they're functions of space-time, and it's using the coordinate basis. Um, but if you just considered it at one point in space-time, it's just a bunch of constants that are real numbers times the basis vector. In quantum mechanics, the, the, uh, uh, the, the scalar multiplication property isn't from, isn't from, um, the real numbers, like here, you have y alpha as a function of space-time. That's an element of the real numbers, right? If you plug in a value, let's say, at p, at a point p in space-time, you get a real number. Here, the arbitrary vector might be considered cn, or c, it's actually, you would have to write it all out. The sum of c as a function of n of n, if you had a countable basis, you could write it out as a sum, where you're summing from n equals 0 
to infinity, that would represent a typical vector. There's no summation convention in quantum mechanics. But these c's are c of n is an element of the complex numbers, right? So these are complex vector spaces because its scalar multiplication prop property is in, is in complex numbers. And that's a, a much richer, uh, gives you a much richer world to work in in many ways because of that. The other problem is that if I take a vector, I'm going to just use these ends for right, for right now. If I take a vector in a quantum mechanical vector space that's under study and I multiply it by c, and if I take the same basis vector and I multiply it by d, where c and d are complex numbers, these two things represent the same state. right? That's very different because if I changed alpha, y alpha, from, say, to, to z, it's a different vector. In, in, in general relativity, you can't do that. You can't play, you can't claim that y alpha and z alpha are the same vector. They have to have exactly the same numerical values. Here, if you have different numerical values, you're still talking about the same state. What it ends up being is that the probability of being in that state changes, but the state itself is the same. So we actually call these the same vectors. And it turns out there's a uh, fancy mathematical word for this. This is a projective space uh, when you do it that way. However, it's just important to understand that, that it's very different. You change, those com you change those components here, you're changing the vector. You change those components here, you're, not, you're changing the vector because remember, these are still vector spaces and each multiple, each uh, scalar product times a basis vector is a different vector, but it represents the same physical state. It's how you interpret this vector when you create the model of reality that's different. In other words, when you interpret a different vector here, you're saying you've got a different vector. You've got a different physical thing going on. Here, the state doesn't change, um, but other things do, and we're not talking about quantum mechanics, so I won't exp go into exactly how or why that is right now. So what about the dual space? Well, here we know that the dual space is given in the basis of one forms. I'll call it like that. And we know that this, the basis vectors of the dual space are chosen so that these one forms, when acting on these um, partial differential operators, gives you, well, I should put the C, J here, delta I J. This is a J. Right? That's the that's the way we choose the basis in the dual space. But the dual space is a space of maps and maps and it maps uh, vectors into real numbers. And this is how the basis vector for the dual space is chosen. Uh, likewise, there is a dual space in quantum mechanics, and it is the space of bras. These are bras. These are cats. And this dual space is defined. Uh, in precisely the same way. The basis vectors of this dual space, so why don't I call this B for a second, right? This basis vectors, the basis vectors of the dual space are defined in a very similar way so that when B, um, you would, we would want to say when B is applied to A, you get delta uh, B A. Right? You, this is a bra, that's a dual space uh, vector. This is a vector space vector. This is the dual space mapping. The outer brackets are dual space mapping. These inner brackets are part of the way we write down vectors in the quantum mechanical system. And when you bind them together like this, you get, if there's, these are countable, you get this uh, delta function. It's exactly the same thing. Um, but this is always written in a much more elegant form, B bar A. You just put them both together, right? So that's the origin of this kind of notation. Uh, this And this is the dual space mapping of the bra B on the ket A. Whenever you hear bra, you think dual vector. Whenever you hear ket, you think vector. That's another thing that makes quantum mechanics a little different, is this thing is called, they, they name their vector spaces, right? They name the ket space and the bra space because they don't like to talk about vectors and dual vectors. They just say kets and bras, but they're both vector spaces. One is the vector space, one is the dual space, and the dual space mapping is given by this. What they, you'll see in a moment, so 
So then what's the next thing that uh, is floating around out there that we know about? Well, we also know about the inner product, right? The inner product. And in our world, or in the GR world, the inner product of two vectors that are both elements of the same space is always going to be a real number. From this inner product, we realize, hey, if I take two vectors and I get a real number, well, why don't I just create a tensor that does that, right? Uh, well, I should, I should, this should be d x mu d x nu. So there's my tensor that imitates this this thing, and if I give this tensor v and w as arguments, I end up with a real number, right? And then from this, I learn, well, what, what if I only feed it one, and I can actually just write it in notation form, really, is the way to think about it. Um, v uh, mu w nu, and then that is just, if I exercise the, uh, um, the, uh, contraction on mu, I just get v nu w nu. And this object here is, um, is, this has the same value as the inner product, right? That's got to equal v w. That's how we define this metric tensor, right? And so what I now say is I've, I've kind of linked, because of this, I've created this covector, which I've linked to a vector here, right? So this covector v this ve vector v mu is now linked to this covector v uh, nu. So I have this link linked set linkage set up, and so now I can just write that the dual space mapping of v of v nu on w. Uh, well, I, actually, I could say v nu on w nu equals the inner product of v and w, right? And this establishes a link between the underlying vector space and the dual space. That's how it's done in general relativity. Now in quantum mechanics, a lot of it, you can write A operating on B. There's an inner product out there. right? This is a ket A and a ket B. They're vectors. Inner product, it exists, but it's an element of the complex numbers this time. right? So instead of going this way, creating a metric, figuring it out, creating lowering operators that switch vectors to covectors and then taking dual space mappings they just they start the other way they begin with the dual space mapping they begin with the linkage between v and v star they start here and they go backwards and that's perfectly fine you can start anywhere you can define an inner product and create everything you can define a metric tensor and create everything you can define a dual space mapping or a mapping between the vectors and covectors and go backwards you can do it any way and quantum mechanics does it this way and so they define a connection between the space of bras and the space of kets, right? Which we call H and H in this case, right? And once they do that, they say, okay, well, if I take to to imitate this inner product, I'm going to take the um, I'm going to take the uh, the bra connected to A and apply it with a dual space mapping on the ket connected to B, and that's going to equal this inner product, right? That's what they've done. So they've gone the other direction. And it's an element of the complex numbers, right? So uh, so it's totally legit. They don't they don't and they skip the metric tensor all, all the way. They they don't they don't play with the metric. They just go right to the end and go back. They assert that these bras work this way. And there's the way you know that there's no metric is that you've never seen there's look as my hard as you want in quantum mechanics you'll never see a way where they explicitly tell you how to take a and turn it into a they really never show you how to do that that would be the equivalent of a raising and lowering of an index just like it is here right you take this expression here takes v a, contra, a contravariant v and gives you a covariant v that they've switched from the vector space component to the covector space component. They never teach you how to do that in quantum mechanics. That you just assert the existence of it is designed in such a way as to mimic some kind of uh, vector space. And of course, the definition of, is going to be um, uh, very similar. If uh, if you have, uh, with the exception when you have continuous eigenvalues, so it's a little more tricky. So anyway, there's that.